Uh, I, I was always intending on talking about this topic the moment we got our first snowfall. I was not going to pre-record this. I was going to wait until we got the first snowfall and then I was going to talk about this very subject and it happened. We got It was fake snow. Like it melted right away. It didn't stick on the ground. Today it's just super cold and rainy. It's like 40 degrees Fahrenheit and it's just raining. Um, and hopefully, I mean... I'm excited for snow because we get we, we're in the snow removal business. It's good business for us. But I'm also hoping we get a couple more weeks here in northern Canada where we don't get snow. I would love to just squeak in a few more painting projects with the guys that are paving. Uh, we still have a lot of opportunities. Uh, we're probably not going to get them all done, partly just because you know snow is coming and the guys not be able to pave. But I'm hoping that it holds on. Thank you for listening today. Um, please don't forget to give us a like, subscribe, all that good stuff. If you're watching on YouTube, what's good YouTube. If you're listening uh, on a podcast app, smashing a review uh, or a star rating goes a long way. It really does help and it doesn't take too long. So appreciate you guys for doing that. Uh, let's do a quick shameless plug. Uh, stripeitacademy.com. I talked about this on the last episode. I've had some awesome feedback. I've got to connect with some, some great people. A couple people who just said, no, nah, I, I can't spend the money right now. And that's totally understandable. But a couple people I've connected with and have joined the program uh, have been awesome to meet those people. And a quick little update. Officially, at the time of this recording, there's five spots remaining of the eight in the upcoming academy. Uh, Likely it's only four, though, because I know one, he hasn't filled out the form, but it's likely going to happen there. So uh, four spots remaining. The deadline is November the 4th, 2022. Um, If you're interested in what that program is, if you don't know anything about it, um, stripeitacademy.com. Con. But let's get into today's snow topic. It's going to be a little bit of a shorter episode to counterbalance the nearly hour that I talked about last week uh, about pricing. Uh, I did get some interesting feedback about that too. A couple of people asked some questions about what exactly, how you price um, on a labor basis when you're a newer company. Um, so if you have any questions about that last episode, basically the last episode was all about why pricing per foot or per stall might not be the best idea, which is a little edgy and a little controversial. So uh, if you have any questions, just let me know about that. But today I want to talk about what you can do to get ready for the 2023 paint season. I wanted to wait till it snowed to talk about this because it's very easy. It doesn't matter if you're in Canada you know, where it snows, depending where you are, four or five months uh, of the year, or maybe you're in a part of the the states where it just gets too cold and wet and rainy. Maybe you do get the odd snowfall, but most companies, most striping specific companies tend to wind down this time of year, right? Um, A lot of companies won't be working at all in November and then December, January, you know, I was just chatting with a gentleman from Texas this morning who ignorantly me, I just presumed you guys paint in Texas all year round. I think you probably could, but he's like, it gets pretty quiet in January, February. So no matter where you are in the world, um, you have a down season, right? Or downtime at the end of the season. And it's, it, I believe that if you want to really maximize the potential of your company, there are so many things that you can do from a sales standpoint, to get ready for the next year, even when it's snowing. Uh, So I want to talk about four specific things here today that I have used in my business in the winter's past, uh, specifically last winter. And I think this will really help uh, a lot of companies who are looking to grow or looking for more opportunities. There's a few things that you can do all winter long that will really, really help you. I think there's some low hanging fruit to take advantage of for as far as sales opportunities go for the upcoming year. So whether you start implementing this stuff right away here in November or slowly over the course of the winter, um, there's some, there's some helpful tips here for you guys. So number one, um, this has nothing to do with sales, but I would strongly advocate this just based on how tumultuous the world has been with supply chain issues, equipment, uh, material, like don't, wait to go to your vendors for your 2023 painting season when you need the paint. It sounds so obvious, but like, please don't do that. So here in Canada, in our part of the world, in Prince George, like, you know, we don't start painting till at least April, right? First, second week of April, maybe if the snow's gone and the parking lot is all cleaned up. It would be a huge mistake to go to your paint stores that March and say, hey, you got paint this year? Don't, don't do that. You're, you're putting yourself, your company at a huge risk. You don't necessarily need to buy paint, you know, in December, January, but guys go have proactive discussions with your vendors, ask them what's happening. 
Now, and that's something I do all the time. And it sounds like in the macro view, I got to be really careful here because I'm just guessing, but it sounds like in the macro view of paint in North America, it sounds like most vendors are optimistic that next year will be a little bit better, right? I don't think it could be a whole lot worse than what we've seen in 2021 and 2022. But it would be a mistake to bank on that, thinking that you could just stroll into your local store April 1st and buy a skid of paint. Um, that, you know, that might not happen. It might not happen ever again. And that's kind of the point. Nobody actually knows. Or if they do, uh, you know, people in paint stores aren't being told that information. I don't think there's a great conspiracy amongst the staff at your local paint stores withholding information from you. I think the people in charge of manufacturing the higher ups in these companies likely have some information, but who knows what actually is going to happen. Don't get caught. Don't make assumptions. Spend the winter, check in with your vendors, buy your branch manager or your sales rep uh, a, a coffee and bring them in something like keep that relationship going and just let them know like you don't want to be caught with, with nothing come the next paint season. That's going to be huge. Um, don't take that risk. So the second thing that uh, I started doing in the last couple years um, and is just tremendously like it's easy to do and it really can set you up for some sales success next year. Contact the clients that you worked with this year, whether it was a $500 job or a $50,000 job, doesn't matter. Go through all of your projects. Now you can do that by either like physically going through your invoices or your email inbox. Um, in our case, that would be with a CRM system. We keep track of all of our projects that we've bid on, that we've lost, we've won. Go through all of the ones that you did business with this year and just communicate with them. Thank them for the work that you did back in May of 2022. And what that's going to do, guys, is it, it puts yourself in a position with your clients that you're not just interested in making a transactional sale with them. You're actually interested in building a relationship with them. You want to, you know, speak from the heart here, but like when you contact them by phone or email, thank them for the opportunity to, to work with you that year. That just shows them that you're not just interested in contacting them every April you know, can I work with you? Can I work with you? Can we restripe your parking lot again? Some clients may just like that. And they might just, you know, they might just want the sake of ease of just calling you every April and like, we're good. Same price. Yeah. It's up 5%, whatever. Some clients are like that, but in overall, you will be much farther ahead to build a relationship with your existing clients based on the work you've done and building a relationship with them so that they like you and they trust you so that they don't view you as somebody who's just transactional. So I think it really goes both ways. Don't view your clients as just somebody who gives you money uh, and work at building a relationship where they don't view you as just somebody who takes your money once a year. Build a relationship with them. I'm a huge believer in client appreciation gifts. Uh, we've, we've struggled with that a little bit, full, full disclosure. We have done it before uh, in a couple years past, but we didn't do it with a, a great consistency, but I found a client appreciation gift at the end of the year. Um, if you haven't budgeted for this, it might be a little late now, but it goes a long way. Uh, we've done things like coffee mugs before. I know, I, I think I've mentioned this before, but my business coach was he, for a few years in a row when he was selling roofs, he would bring all of his preferred clients in like this cheesecake platter, something that tells the client, Hey, even though we worked with you many months ago, we're, we're grateful and thankful for that opportunity. Um, something like that can really go a long way. You don't have to do elaborate, but if you're going to do a client appreciation gift, you might as well put your logo on something, right? And, uh, oh, I don't actually have my coffee mug right to show you here. I don't know, get them hats. We got the laser puff hat here. It says laser line painting on the back. Um, we've given people hats before, which, you know, shirts, sweaters, all that sort of thing. Promotes your company. Um, it's just a good thing. Yeah, it tells your clients that you enjoyed working with them. And just a little sidebar, don't buy cheap crap either. I made that mistake. We we bought some, we had some issues with our quality in our products and it was almost embarrassing to give them out because a lot of the decals failed. So if you're going to buy client appreciation gifts as a thank you for your clients, get good quality stuff. Don't cheap out. Third thing uh, you can do in preparation for 2023 with the mind of sales is uh, contact the clients that you didn't work with this year. This goes against the grain a little bit from what the advice you might see online and on Facebook. Sounds like I trash the Facebook groups a lot. I don't. I, I love the Facebook groups, but um, there is a an idea that is uh, promoted a lot on the Facebook groups, which is 
if you don't win a job, shake the dust off, go on to the next one, forget about it. I mean, from a mindset standpoint, sure, don't get yourself hung up on things, but you should always be interested in the reason why you didn't get that opportunity to work with somebody and um, get the, understand the reason why and maybe find out uh, if there's an opportunity to work with them again in the future. So just a generic hypothetical example, but this is something that's happened. It happens a lot and it's happened to us. We are often not the lowest priced uh, provider. So if somebody wants to get, you know, multiple prices for something, if, if that's their, that's their way of doing it, you know, we might give them a price and they might say, well, actually we, the other guys got it because they were a little bit less money or, or whatever. Just because we didn't win the job doesn't mean I'm not going to follow up with those people. And so again, this comes back to our, our CRM program that we use that I've used since the, uh, the beginning. Um, go listen to the episode on CRM. If you want to know what that is all about. But basically, I, I keep track of all the jobs um, that I've put a proposal in, even if our company didn't get awarded that job. I know who the person is. I know what their name is. I know what their phone number is. I know what their email is. And ideally, I even assign a reason as to why we didn't get to work with them on that specific project. And over the course of the winter, you can follow up with those people in a kind-hearted way, not with a malicious angle, but you ask them, thank you for that opportunity we had to, to give you a proposal for that project um, in a perfect world, maybe you've even seen it with your own eyes, but you could ask them, how did that project go? Did you get everything looked after? Um, and the reason why you want to ask that guys, it's entirely possible that somebody you gave a proposal to had problems on that project. Maybe they used somebody who wasn't reputable. Uh, maybe they didn't get the project done at all because, uh, something fell through with budget or something happened with the other contractor. And, and you might have an opportunity to work with them on that very same project the following year. But even if they had the project looked after, let's say you email somebody and you're like, hey, how did that, you know, thanks for that opportunity to quote on that sweet building or, you know, your properties at this place. Um, how did that project go? Even if they say to you, yeah, it went great. The other guys did it, you know, had no issues with the work. You can still go back to them in an email and say, I'm really glad that you had it looked after. I'm glad everything worked out. We would love to be able to be in a position to work with you guys in the future. So, you know, don't forget about us. Um, we would love an opportunity and I'll still check in with you from time to time. Um, we want to be around here for a while and we'd love an opportunity to work with you guys again. That one email can go a long way because their contractor that they use this year, uh, many things could go wrong. Again, maybe they didn't do a good job. Maybe they won't be around next year. Maybe they get too busy and drop the ball. Um, you're basically looking for a, an, uh, an opportunity, right? I don't know if you guys are football fans, but Tom Brady sat behind Drew Bledsoe for quite a while on the bench of the New England Patriots. He was not the starting quarterback, and now he's the greatest football player of all time. Sometimes you got to ride the bench, you know, and that's okay. The goal isn't to win every single job. There are some clients you won't work with, but just ride the bench for a while. That's okay. But don't ride the bench and not say anything to those people. Because if you don't have some sort of active communication with them, even if it's, sorry, we couldn't work with you this year, those people are, are going to forget about you. You want people to know who you are uh, and ideally like you. And if you're sending positive emails out, even when you didn't get the job, people will like you. So don't be afraid to pull a Tom Brady and ride the bench. Last but not least, uh, yeah, I got to wrap this up because I got 10 minutes left here. Uh, last but not least, the fourth thing you can do is work on your relationships with other contractors, number one, referral partners, number two, and new prospects, new sales prospects, number three. So what I mean by that is um, over the course of the winter, you know, if you do a lot of work with paving companies or have tried to do work with paving companies, very similar to what we just talked about with clients you didn't work for. Uh, keep in touch with those people. Go bring your estimators at your paving companies, uh, a box of donuts and coffees and stuff over the winter. Ask them how they're doing. Keep in mind that they may not physically be in the office in the winter, at least up here. You know, estimators, if they do work, they usually just work at home because they don't have a lot to do. Um, but the point is keep in touch with these people, other contractors, other subcontractors. The whole idea here, guys, is you're trying to keep an active relationship with these people. Again, don't be transactional actually have a relationship. I'm not saying be best friends with them and go out with them on Friday nights. I'm saying stay in their radar because as long as you are in a contractor's radar, the next time they have an opportunity for a proposal, a job, or they have a question about painting or 
something that comes up. You want them to think of you. And the only way you're going to do that is if you stay on their radar, keep in touch with them, build a relationship with them. Very similarly, if you haven't uh, built a, a referral partner network before, if you don't have that relationship with people um, such as landscaping companies or uh, you know exterior improvement contractors, even like concrete companies, these are companies that might not do the same service that you do. They may not be into line striping. You still want to have a relationship with them so that if they get asked for opportunities for striping, they can refer them to you. And because it's called a partner, that goes both ways. When you have clients, you know, if you're on a job site and you notice that um, there's a section of sidewalk that is failing and needs to be repaired concrete sidewalk, it would be really great for you to have a, re a referral partner, a, a concrete contractor that you could go to or at the very least go to your client and say, I notice you got that. It looks like you need a bit of a repair there. Do you have a solution? Here's a company that we would really recommend, Bob's, Bob's Concrete. We work with them a lot actually on similar projects. Um, they do a really great job. I, I would refer you over to them if you need that looked after. That sort of active referral partner building relationship goes a heck of a long way. Um, it's basically a way for you guys to get referrals and work in leads sent to you just for having a good relationship with somebody, which is primo. And then, of course, the uh, other people you'd want to build relationships with over the winter is new prospects, so uh, new leads. So keep your eye open on, you know, uh, depending on your area, you might have like a bidding website or where bids go up. So we have that in, in our, usually on a province level or state level if you're in the states. So our province has a couple like provincial websites where new construction tenders go up. Um, keep an eye on those throughout the winter. Just check it every Friday morning or once or twice a week. Keep your eye on things that are coming up. Even if they're not opportunities that you bid on directly, um, sometimes just following up with the people who are bidding those um, gets your foot in the door with them and you can start building some relationships that way and hopefully find some, some new projects to bid on that you might not have been directly invited to bid on before. And don't forget about other people in your market too, like in your local area. Um, you know, many striping business owners, when they start, they do the they do the hustle thing, right? And they're dropping business cards off along the way home and uh, doing everything that they can to raise awareness for their companies. Um, you can still do that over the winter. Uh, my preference is to do that with email. If it's not somebody that I know before, I don't really want to, you know, show up at their business per se or phone them. I'd rather give them an email. Um, I've talked about some cold email uh, strategies before. I'm a big, big believer in it. But yeah, spend your winter and find those kinds of properties or the kinds of people, property managers that you'd like to work with, build a relationship with them. I'm also big on LinkedIn. Get on LinkedIn. There's a lot of decision makers for properties that you want to work with. They are on LinkedIn and yet they might not, you know, comment on people's stuff. They might not like your stuff. They might not do anything on LinkedIn other than go on there and just scroll the feed. And if they start seeing you on there, um, you can... Uh, they'll find some good leads that way or at the very least you can start finding some other people on your own doing some searching uh, but no matter what you do the point of this episode is there's so much that you can do over the course of an off season to get yourself ready for the next season um, you know again go back to a sports analogy baseball teams basketball teams football teams hockey teams they do not take the entire off season off and then just show up at the start of the season and get planned they have training camps. They stay sharp. They do things to prepare for them uh, for their upcoming season. Your business should be the exact same. Don't wait until the start of the season to get things going. Get in touch with your vendors. Get in touch with clients you've worked with in, in the previous year. Get in touch with the people you didn't get a chance to work with this year. And then build those relationships with contractors, referral partners, and new prospects. And you will set yourself up for a super good 2023. That's it. Hope you found that valuable. If you did, uh, share some love on social media. Give us a like, a thumbs up, comment on a post, uh, share our story. Whatever you want to do, it helps out tremendously. Keep your stripes hot, people. I will talk to you next time.